Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Today is December 10th, 2019, and it's a Tuesday. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, the only place to get worse weather in North America than Nova Scotia is on top of Mount Washington. You know, my grandfather told me stories about Mount Washington, the top of Mount Washington, how climbers, you know, can get trapped up there. A storm will come in, and uh, it's terrible, you know, the weather that they get on top of Mount Washington. The highest recorded wind speeds around up there. Anyway, it blew all night last night here. <laughs> Crazy wind storm we had. Uh, the winds, the gusts were around 60 miles an hour, somewhere around in that area. Uh, 50, 60 miles an hour, and battered the house all night long with lashing rain and everything. Kept me up late, you know. Awful bad storm. Anyway, let's get started. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look. You know, guys, this is my worst nightmare. A major freight carrier in the United States just bankrupted, leaving 3,000 truckers jobless, many stranded on the highway. Manufacturing recession gains momentum, the largest U.S. truck load carrier filed for bankruptcy Monday morning, leaving 3,000 truck drivers and 500 administration positions without a job weeks before Christmas. Indianapolis-based Caledon, Caledon filed for voluntary Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the early hours Monday morning. Now, you know, people, uh, they just don't know. They think that the food gets to the grocery store automatically, uh, maybe the tooth fairy delivers it or something. No. This is one of the biggest carriers that brings the food to the grocery store. And you know what? They filed Chapter 11. This is going to put difficulties in the system and getting the food to the stores. This is a just-in-time deliveries, you know. Now, what if this uh, crisis gets worse in the future, you know, future months from now? Uh, this could already be the leading edge of, of, of problems in the supply chain deliveries. Uh, this Caledon truck, uh, trucking company going down, bankrupt. Uh, this come out of nowhere. Anyway, let's take a look at the markets now and see what's going on. So let's start with silver today. And we got a rising silver price today. Uh, what we're looking at is $16.66. It's up nine cents on the day. That's looking good, you know, and uh, let's see it continue to rise. Let's take a look at gold for a minute here. Gold is rising, too. It's at $5.60 on the day. Uh, $1,466 for gold. Now let's take a look at crypto. See what it's doing. Crypto's going nowhere. Crypto's been really flat lately. Hanging in right around $200 billion. Uh... What we're looking at right now is 199.9 billion with a Bitcoin dominance of 66%. And we're looking at a Bitcoin price of 73.44 today. It's going nowhere, sideways. It's setting up for a move. Uh, everybody knows that. Which way is it going to go? That's the big question mark. Now let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average today. Down 71 points on the day so far. Uh, I notice these days when it goes down, it doesn't go down that much. And when we get days, it goes up like 300, you know. The Dow's in a bubble. And uh, we're going to have to wait until the new year to see what it does, you know. But what they're starting to do with the Dow is they're starting to price in actions of the Fed. You know, and uh, they're, they're anticipating what the Fed's going to do. It's all about what the Fed's going to do. That's what the Dow does now. So the Dow only reacts to the Fed. They, they watch the Fed like a hawk to see what the Fed's going to do, the Federal Reserve. Let's take a look now at uh, crude oil. It's down 12 cents on the day, six dollars and uh, six zero point two zero percent $58.90, it looks like for today, for sweet light crude. It's been going sideways for the last number of days with a slight uptick. Now let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries. And it looks like uh, 
the treasuries just have turned in the last few minutes. They were falling yields on the long end of the curve, and now they're changing directions uh, just that quick. Uh, so now it's a mixed bag. We got some yields moving down. We got some yields moving up. But we're looking at the U.S. 30-year uh, at 2.25, the U.S. 10-year at 1.82, uh, the U.S. 7-year at 1.76, U.S. 5-year at 1.56, or no, 1.66, uh, U.S. 3-year at 1.64, U.S. 2-year at 1.63, 1-year at 1.55, Six year, uh, six month at uh, 1.56. So that's what we have for the treasuries today. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index and see what it's doing. 97.53 on the U.S. dollar index, and it's falling slightly today. And that's the reason why gold and silver are moving today in the opposite direction, which is that's that's normal movement for the gold to move in the opposite direction from the dollar. So if the dollar's falling today, gold's going up a little bit. That's normal. Listen, one of my biggest concerns in a financial crisis is the ability of these trucking companies, the vulnerability of the trucking companies to the financial industry. It's a little bit of a surprise to me to see this trucking company turning over before a crisis even starts. And this is one of the, why well, it's a surprise, it's one of the biggest trucking firms, you know, it's a huge trucking firm. This is how your food gets to the stores. And, you know, uh, if, if, if one of these trucking firms is going down, this is like a big bank going down, it, it has a big significance and we might see this significance in the up and coming weeks on certain items within the stores just not being available because these trucks aren't delivering them. Uh, now, I haven't done the research yet of how many of these really large trucking firms are in the United States and just how significant this particular one is. But according to Zero Hedge, let's take a look here. It says that... Uh, it's a it's it's a, a major freight carrier. Uh, it says, and uh, truckers jobless and stranded on the highways. This uh, it, it says this is the largest U.S. truckload carrier. That's what it says here. As, as manufacturing recession gains momentum, the largest U.S. truckload carrier filed for bankruptcy mon Monday. Now this truck. Uh, what exactly do they carry? Are they a truck that carries uh, manufacturing items, manufacturing goods, or are they a truck carrier that carries multiple things like food goods and 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 ma and manufacturing goods like to the ports? Like they'll create it at a factory, they'll create a, a product, and then they have to get it from the factory to the port where they can ship it overseas oftentimes, you know, manufacturers, or they have to get it to various locations within the United States where they're going to sell it, various retail outlets and stuff like that. Uh, that's not going to affect the food supply so much if that trucking company uh, carries mostly manufacturing products, see? So I'm just not exactly sure what they're carrying, whether they carry food products to the stores or not. The real... Uh, link in the chain that, that we should really worry about would be the trucking companies that carry food, you know, and bring food and, and uh, items to our stores, you know. And I'm not sure if this particular trucking company is that trucking company or not, or one of them, or whether we're going to see... Uh, all I know is the trucking companies act as a system in the United States. you got many different trucking companies... When you pull one like this from the system, it's going to cause the whole system to have problems within it. Other trucking companies maybe can make up the slack. I just don't know. I haven't done enough research on it. I'm going to check into it a little bit deeper today. You know, listen, thank you guys for listening to the show. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.